Okay, there's a bunch of things I want to talk about in this video, but the first one is doing a shortcut to the power cross. This is our prescription written in positive cylinder. The first thing we're going to do is transpose it into minus cylinder. And once we have our prescription written in both positive cylinder and negative cylinder, watch this cool trick. Was that awesome? Once you have your prescription written in both plus cylinder and minus cylinder, you just take your sphere and axis from one prescription, put it on one meridian, sphere and axis from the other prescription, put it on another meridian, and there you have it. That's your power cross, and it works every single time, not just with axes of 180 and 90, but with any axis. Okay, remember the five types of astigmatism, where as far as the focal line, simple myopic, one falls in front of the retina, one falls on the retina, simple hyperopic, one falls behind the retina, one falls on the retina, compound myopic, they both fall in front of the retina, compound hyperopic, they're both behind the retina, and then mix, where one's in front of the retina and one's behind the retina. Okay, why am I bringing this up? Because I want to show you how the power crosses will tell you what type of astigmatism. So if you look at this power cross, you can tell this patient has simple myopic astigmatism because there is a plano and a negative number, a minus 150. The plano will um, correspond with those green dashed lines. That focal line is already on the retina, so it doesn't need correction. And the other one is in front of the retina. The minus 150 will bring that onto the retina. So if you look at those two numbers, you can tell what type of astigmatism. Simple hyperopic, we have a plano that corresponds to the focal line that's already on the retina, and then a plus to bring the one that's behind the retina onto the retina, because plus is what we need use to correct hyperopia. So following along, the compound myopia would require two negatives, the compound hyperopia would require two positives, and the mix would re require a negative and a positive. This is a keratometer, and it measures corneal curvature and then puts it in diopters. The average reading on the keratometer is 44. The higher the K reading, the steeper the curve. So K readings of something like, let's say we have 46 at 90, 43 at 180. 90 is going to be steeper. Um, the 43 at 180 is going to be our flatter curve. So you're going to have an eye that shapes something like a football in the passing position also known as with the rule astigmatism. Now if you flip those two readings around and you have 43 at 90 and 46 at 180, 90 degrees is going to be flatter, 180 is going to be steeper, so what you're going to have is a, an eye in the football punting position, also known as against the rule astigmatism. Notice how I have plus minus 30 degrees at the bottom there. All that means is that it doesn't have to be exactly at 90 and exactly at 180. There's a leeway of plus minus 30 degrees on either side. So there's a range that's considered with the rule and against the rule. And astigmatism patients that don't fall into those ranges have what's known as oblique astigmatism. I think it's worth noting here at this point that many sources say it's plus minus 20 degree leeway, not 30 degree. In fact, I think most sources that I checked um, say plus minus 20. So just keep in mind that it's either or, 30 degrees or 20 degrees. Oblique astigmatism. There's not a whole lot to say about oblique astigmatism except that it exists and it can be either symmetrical or asymmetrical. And that's that. Up until now, we've been talking about regular astigmatism. There's also another type, irregular astigmatism. 
and generally irregular astigmatism is due to irregularly shaped corneas. And it is distinguished by the fact that the focal lines are not 90 degrees apart. There's a whole lot of things that might cause irregular astigmatism. And it's usually not correctable by soft contact lenses or eyeglass lenses. Um, the best thing to correct is usually rigid gas permeable contact lenses. How would things look to a person with astigmatism? Well, that's going to depend on a lot of different factors. But when they look at a figure like this, what might be seen is um, instead of crisp, clear lines all the way around, there might be portions that are blurrier or um, maybe even distorted or lighter in color, not as dark. I'm going to end this video with a two question quiz. They're very simple um, questions, simple information, but they might require a little bit of critical thinking skill.